<laughs> Hello everybody, Ben Rogers here, the Raptor side, just reacting to some breaking news for the Toronto Raptor. Riker, your puppers is loving the news. We may as well plague this segment right now. Let's let's bust it out. I'm not, I'm not sure if you are muted, but the, the dog is hyped. Everyone's hyped because Freddie Gillespie got signed to a multi-year contract with the Toronto Raptors. His 10 days, finishing up his second 10 day, he was guaranteed for the end of this season and then signed on for a non-guaranteed contract next year. That will be fully converted if he does make the opening night roster. Riker, Gillespie, he had a couple down games as of late, but overall is really impressed with this Raptors team. What are your thoughts on the signing for the Toronto Raptors? Ben, big pickup. And some people will say that his game is slacked or it's not really at backup center caliber if the Raptors are trying to get back into the playoff picture next year. But this guy, he's a hustle guy. He's an energy guy. He's a character. He's already beloved by the fans. And he's worked his butt off, Ben, from getting cut from his high school team or not making his high school team, D3, up to D1, to G League, onto the NBA roster, two 10 game contracts. I, I like this one because... Again, we talked about it in this most recent game against the Nets. How many years has it been since we've had a guy willing to go in and get offensive rebounds, right? Mm. To to get garbage buckets, to be the garbage man. And that's that's Freddie Gillespie's game right now. So I love it. I love to get him around, keep him around on a minimum, give him the opportunity to continue to develop in the NBA and maybe become a part of this Toronto Raptors team. Yeah. And you know, we're going to talk about the Raptors' future, everything that's going to move forward with Freddie Gillespie and the potential it's going to show, and how he's really lived up to our expectations when we made that video. There, I'll go dive in. I didn't pull up the specific tweet. Blake Murphy really dove into the weeds about the specific contract. But again, he signed in for the rest of the season, so he's going to make a couple hundred K, Riker. Not bad for, for a few 10 days. But uh, And then 2021, non-guaranteed minimum, 50K guaranteed trigger and then that fully guarantees if he makes the opening night roster so as you said the hard work is paying off for freddie gillespie and it's marcus all sergi baka obviously tremendous centers for the toronto raptors and Jonas valanchun is the same thing but again those guys were really finesse bigs whether they were you know scoring the paint or whatnot they were more polished and freddie gillespie's just going out there and Put in his nose to the grind, so getting rebounds, blocking shots, getting dunked on occasionally, and that's always, you know, as long as you're trying to block getting those dunked shots. dunked on. Yeah, <laughs> preventing those dunks. He blocked Amar, and then some rando on the Spurs ended up catching him with a, with a proper poster. But anyone that's coming out and giving that energy and living up night after night, that's what the Raptors needed, and... Even though we have still lost to the upper echelon teams, the Knicks, the Nets, these squads, the Raptors have looked so much better when Birch and Gillespie are on the court. And that's a testament to the energy they're bringing. And obviously, this is probably a sign that Aaron Baines, he's on a, on a, has a team option for next season. It'll likely not get picked up now that we're potentially bringing in Gillespie long term and Birch. I think that was the assumption. He said he wants to play in Toronto when he was signed with us. So... I guess before we dive into what maybe our expectations or the potential for Gillespie is going forward, do you want to say any final words for uh, for Aaron Baines and his uh, tenure as a Toronto Raptor? It's been real. I'm sure that the bar the team barbecues were amazing. We know that down under, and especially if you've creeped Aaron Baines' Instagram, he's all over the New Zealand and Australian barbecue pages. <laughs> But otherwise, he's been memed, he's been criticized, he's provided some ups, but mostly downs, and mm -hmm. you know what? It is what it is. It's a, it's a make or miss league. It's a huge cliche, Ben, but if you're not <laughs> hey, producing, <laughs> if you're not producing, you're probably not going to find yourself onto a roster. And, and you know what? This wasn't the roster for him either, because yep. this team had its challenges, whether he was part of it or not, right? Yep. So that's what I'll say about that. Two little points. Was it Drew Eubanks? Was it a big white guy that dunked yeah, on Freddie yeah. Gillespie? Yeah. That's definitely who, because I, I was trying to remember the name. And second, fun, let's play a little trivia game. This season, what was the 
NBA's minimum salary. So apparently it goes up for per year of experience. So I'm assuming he's going to have zero years of experience or maybe he'll get one. What what do you think that minimum salary would be? I'm a I'm a guess 850,000. Pretty close. 898 and then on one year of experience 1.445. So Okay. He he you know, shout out to him again. What he's had to, to really battle to find himself Glassby, he's had to really battle to find himself onto an actual NBA roster and to overcome that many challenges mm-hmm. to now be making over a million dollars playing a professional sport. Kudos. Pretty yeah. pretty great. And you alluded to a story earlier. Uh, well, we, we talked about in the video, we actually signed him on our 10-day. We weren't sure because the Raptors have signed a lot of guys on 10-day contracts that make it and leave even this season. Dante Hall, Ellenson, different guys they brought in. But Gillespie's really shown his value and He's done it at every level. He was a Division three basketball player. He was cut from his JV team, if I'm not mistaken, Riker. And yep. he, he made it on to Baylor. He got cut from the Dallas Mavericks, that uh, their preseason roster squad, and fought with the Memphis Hustle, fought in the G League, and got picked up by the Toronto Raptors and showed what he could do, was given the opportunity with this team, especially I th- he was signed a, a few days before Birch, so got that run and then instantly became the, the backup center when Birch was brought in. And now with Boucher injured, he's had more run, more lenient time on the court. So with the Raptors fully in tank mode, I'm excited to see what he can do now that the pressure's off. Because I think that was a big factor into the past few games. He struggled. He'd kind of be forcing around the rim. Those bunnies that he was making consistently when he was first signed, they just weren't going down. And now everything's comfortable, at least for the rest of the season he's built in. He still has to earn that contract for next year. It's non-guaranteed at this point. But I'm excited to see what he can do. And Riker, what are your thoughts on uh, his potential with this team in the future? Because obviously if we're bringing him in, he get, can be a restricted free agent if we end up keeping him for next season. But he's a guy, those raw players, the Raptors love to just develop, maybe send him to the 905. And then if you polish up that offensive game, he's a big enough dude and an energy and more an energetic enough player to where... I think he could be a legitimate backup center or maybe even starting center if that jump shot comes along in the the, the future. I'm looking at his stats in mm-hmm. high school or sorry, college in his final year, his senior year at Baylor, 9.6 points per game, nine rebounds per game. Now he's, tra- how does that translate over into the NBA? His couple games with Toronto, he's shooting 60% from the field, five points. Did you say this at the beginning? His, did you run through his No, stats? I didn't run through his box score. Five points, one block. That's pretty impressive on 16 minutes, almost half a steal, and almost four rebounds. So he's coming in. He's immediately providing some amount of impact because, yeah, yeah, he's been forcing it a little bit as of late, but he doesn't look lost out there. I think he has a decent IQ for the game. He's clearly willing to put in the effort to be under the basket, fight for those offensive rebounds, fight for those garbage points, um, just be a presence in the paint. Like you said, even if he's getting dunked on, he's at least going (laughs) up there to contest and do it reasonably. He is picking up a lot of fouls. I think that's one thing that would have to come with his development because two fouls, per game on his sick on his 16 minutes i don't know if you would consider that a lot or not a lot from a guy who's really an undersized big but Mm -hmm. maybe if he gets a little bit more skilled too with um not getting those reach in fouls that we see him get i can see him the rookie fouls and this is a guy that's coming out of the g league it's not often that those people come in and immediately are studs in the nba so you give him a little bit of time you have the option to keep him around for cheap and he's already shown his value that he's able to go in there and play with the bench unit, then this is a recipe for success. Not that he's going to turn into anything great, but like you said, he has the chance to be a true backup big and take that pressure off somebody like Chris Boucher, who really is a backup four. Yeah, yeah. Boucher, has. it's unfortunate he got injured recently, but the level he's been playing at at the power forward position, it... it it looks so different. It's more natural for Boucher not having to bang down low. It's the same way OG Ananobi. His potential is almost wasted when you play that those types of players at the five because they're better suited going up against guys their size and players they're used to going up against throughout their career. So I'm, I'm excited that Boucher is pushed to his natural position. OG Ananobi is at another level right now. He's People are calling him the next Kawhi. We might have to make a whole video on OG's development, but... Freddie Gillespie, and I, I made the I threw the question out 
could he potentially be a starter one day in the NBA? I don't think that's out of the picture, but I guess more short-term Riker. The Raptors, obviously, this season, we're breaking out the kazoos. The team is in the tank. We're, we're not really worried about winning any games this season, but next year, that's completely going to shift. We have too much talent in this roster. With a retooling, I think we can be back at the top of the Eastern Conference, or at least that should be the goal, regardless of if it happens or not. Do you think, would you trust Freddie Gillespie from what you've seen now after an offseason of development? Do you think he could be the, the backup center for this Toronto Raptors team next year, playing 10 to 15 minutes per game on a, on a roster that's trying to be a top three seed in a conference? Yeah. Now, I don't want to say anything that's not, or that's too timely because mm -hmm. this might be watched farther down the road and people would have no idea what we're talking about. But in a recent game against the Brooklyn Nets, the Raptors mm -hmm. were competitive until the fourth. No Gary Trent Jr., no Chris Boucher. Yeah. That maybe they could have had that game if those two players were playing, right? And Gillespie was in there. What is the composure? What's the makeup of the Eastern Conference besides the 76ers and besides, I guess, the, the Bucks? It's mostly small ball. Boston, Miami, Indiana, New York now, Atlanta, right? Nobody, none of those teams have huge big men. So if you have a guy that is around the size of Freddie Gillespie, he's not being asked to come in and guard Hakeem Olajuwon or Shaquille O'Neal. He's being asked to play positional defense to be able to at least rotate out. And what I've seen so far is that he's able to do those things. Plus he's an energy guy. And if there's one thing that the Raptors development team is able to turn from a nothing into a something it's a guy that at least has hustle has energy we saw it with pascal siakam we saw it with og who's now developing his dribble we see it with all these guys come in that are pretty raw but they're able to put in the work and gillespie fits that mold yeah it's it's really exciting to just have a, a center rotation he's only 23 years old so he's coming in with a lot of chances to to grow and the fact that he's a late bloomer obviously clearly didn't make his JV team didn't even play D1 basketball right away that that skill growth that level of development it's it's happening rapidly so who knows where those next steps could potentially be for Freddie Gillespie going forward and next year ideally the Toronto Raptors we'll see what happens with you know if people get vaccinated if the borders open up if the Raptors are allowed back in Canada but if this team, if the 905 is here, maybe not next season. I don't know if I'm super sold on him necessarily being a reliable backup big for this squad next year, especially going into the playoffs. I think you'd want to polish up his mid-range game, his scoring ability, maybe be play the role Boucher played for the Toronto Raptors last year, right? Have a season where he can do that, go up back and forth to the G League a little bit. I'd like to see a full year of development for Gillespie and then going forward, using that size, using that frame, he does have a really nice touch around the rim. That's one thing that seems to already be there. Obviously, it's a small-ish sample size, only, what, 20 days on this roster. But 10 games. Yeah, 10 games. So we'll see if that's that could be bait. 60% from the field is solid. Like Those are legitimate percentages for an NBA big, five points per game. I think after a year of 905 development, he's a restricted free agent, maybe sign him to one of those Matt Thomas-esque contracts that we had for him, three years, not minimum, but close to minimum level money. That could be a real bargain for this Toronto Raptors team, and you know, see what happens, because ideally I look at Ken Birch as a perfect backup center for this squad right now, and then bring in a guy that can be more of a scorer, more of a creator in the same vein. You know, it's it sucks just thinking about Sergi Baca, but he'd be the perfect fit, the perfect style player for this Raptors team right now. But a guy that can score, play defense, and then having Birch to come in and back that up, that that would be great. And then Gillespie has insurance instead of uh, our insurance pile on this season. And you had to go and break our hearts like that, bringing up Serge Ibaka. I thought you were going to bring up Marc Gasol, which <laughs> it is what it is. You don't, no, no tears shed, but yeah. that's Serge Ibaka. Any reference just hurts the soul. It hurts the soul, but I, I'm excited. I'm happy for Gillespie, too. I, he's become a fan favorite with the those interviews. Just super, it feels really Throw authentic. Up my hands up, playing my song. <laughs> get, I'll get the balloons going. Yeah, get yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. You the butterflies keep... fly away. Yeah. Not in my head like, yeah. <laughs> Moving my hips like, yeah. <laughs> he sung it better. He sung it better. He's singing... He's, uh, he's rocking out in those interviews, so 
We're happy. We're happy he's re-signed. But let us know what you guys think in the comment section below. You're the best for making this far. Check out the Twitter, the Instagram, all that cool stuff. Check out raptors.digest.ca if you want some fire merch. Some fire merch. Riker's got the hoodie in the background there. But uh, we got designs. We got tank shirts. We got everything over there. So go to raptors.digest.ca. Check out the, the store and the nav bar. And... Yeah, get yourself some some merch for the off season. Season one of Raptors Digest merch. But Riker, do you have any last words on Freddie Gillespie? Good to have on. Oh, I butchered that. <laughs> <laughs> Good to have you on board. The dog right on cue. He's getting the enthusiasm as well. So <laughs> you love to see it.